back. I'm, I'm hot right now because, I don't know, I think I might have mentioned this on Kyle and Corin, but, like, if you're a parent or you're uh, someone who works with kids, you, like, you should win a Nobel Beast, Peace Prize or... A Nobel Beast Prize. A Nobel Beast Prize or some award because... Getting kids to sleep and doing anything with kids is impossible. I don't know. I don't remember. Like, I remember when I was a kid, our parents saying that, like, I was kind of a pain in the ass and I would do stuff to push their buttons and, like, they would, like, our dad would be very frustrated. But I don't ever remember as a kid, like, like getting out of my room. Like, it's just, like, I don't know how kids... They understand what you're telling them because they're mad smart, but they don't like actually do anything that you're telling them to do. It's all routine. I mean, with our kids, we just we straight up throw them in the room, close the door. They they used to cry for a bit, and then we just let them cry, and then they just started falling asleep on their own. And then eventually, they was just like, "All right, we're in our rooms. It's just time to sleep." But it's like it's like kids are kind of like like dogs and cats where they have this like sixth sense where they understand stuff and they know things like almost to like a next level point where they do something to piss you off even more. Like, I don't know. It's like, it's I don't, yeah, I, I, like kids might be smarter than adults in some capacity. <laughs> like I we know that... obviously more as adults of like safety and stuff to like protect them. But they they have this like instinctual thing that they 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 like just know how to push people's buttons and maybe we have that as adults but we don't use it because we well, know that that's, that's not what you're supposed to do. Right. We've had years and years of experience to know that's not what you're supposed to do with other people. But they're they're just learning those boundaries now. You ever see those cat videos? One person's like, "Don't do it. Don't no, do I mean, it." No, cats and are dumb as shit. Like, I've always said cats are super dumb. I know, but they, they're just like intentional assholes where they'll like they'll be like a cup of milk on the table and they'll just be like pushing it a little bit and then a little bit more and then they'll just And knock that's it what a table. kid would do and at, at what like age, like why why do we know at th- well at like thirty you know not to do that just because one, you're gonna be probably the one cleaning up the milk and at three you know that someone else is gonna do that shit for you. Yeah, and they're also trying to see what they get away with. And then if they do that and then you yell at them or you just reprimand them in some way, in some serious cases, like a parent, like, beats yeah. the shit out of them. Yeah. Like, then they're like, well, I'm never doing that again. And then they learn. But that's, like, how development works. Yeah. Like, then that kid winds up being, like, afraid of their parents or respecting their parents or saying, like, oh, I, I, I'm not going to do that anymore. Like, that was just stupid. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's habit. They learn time and time again. It's like anything. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, well, whatever. I just wanted to tell everyone out there that I should win an award. That we should all win an awards, okay? Because it's like that's yeah, tough. Yeah. Well, all right. So that you you put your hand up, and it made me think of something. I think I saw like a, a Halloween band aid on your thumb. Is oh, that I got the baby. The, I got the baby shark. Baby shark. Even better. So. I almost think you'd be a little psychotic if I went to your house and I asked for a Band-Aid and you just gave me some standard Band-Aid shit. Like if your Band-Aid didn't have some Spider-Man design on it or some like weird princess like like Moana and you don't even have kids. Like I would I would fuck with you more if you gave me a Band-Aid and it had like a princess on it and you don't even have kids just because you can't buy Band-Aids. You can't buy the standard Band-Aids. That's just like – a unwritten rule. You gotta go to the band aid aisle like it's Christmas Hanukkah morning and buy some like crazy shit. Yes and no. But then if you get those legit band aids, those type of band aids that you know, I'll wear the same band aid for like three months. Like, and a, I'm like, like damn, this band aid is legit. So but you gotta you gotta sh- classify what kind of band aid because that band aid looks super small on your like it looks like it can't breathe on your thumb. <laughs> like, no, it's, it's just because I'm an idiot and I went to go <laughs> clean a knife before and I should just use a sponge. Instead, I took my fingers like this to, like, get the food off it. I straight up sliced my finger. Sometimes and I'll do that, too, with a knife. And, like, you just forget you're holding a knife or, like, some scissors or some shit. And you're just yeah, like, but why would I put my hand in the middle of that? It was so dumb. And, I, like, I knew I was holding a knife. It was just like, I, I don't want to grab the sponge right now. I'm just going to use my fingers. 
So that so what were you did you have a choice of band aids to go to or was it straight Baby Shark I mean, was all that you that had? That was Baby Shark or Frozen. Yeah, so I respect that because when we were growing up, we had like this little closet in the hallway, and they always had some band aids in it that were. There might have been a standard box somewhere in there. We had crusty band aids growing up. Yeah, definitely crusty band aids because they were like, don't splurge on band aids if you have to buy. Don't buy dollar store band aids because the dollar store band aids, they don't have any stick to them. They'll right, and and they're like, the good band aids are the one. So all right, so here's where it's at. If you when you used to go to the nurse's office and they gave you a band aid. They had like the cloth kind of band-aid. It was like the brown like mesh yeah. material. That Legit. shit will stay on your finger for years. Like yep. the, it's got like the stick on it is ridiculous to a point where like it leaves that black mark on your hand because it's so stickable. It's like a tar in it. It's like the same shit they like make the roads out of. I, I, I yes, there it's like heavy duty like I think the 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 Marines use that type of band-aid because it'll so like yeah. heal your shit in like a half like if they put one of those band-aids on like a gashing cut that you need stitches for you might be good, you're good. yeah you're good gunshot wounds <laughs> anything that band-aid will save your life but if you don't have some crazy type of band-aid in your house you gotta like you gotta rethink what you're doing as a person so everyone has to look in their cut like closets and let us know what type of band-aids you're rocking with in your house because that's just like a low key. Are band aids something that you would have with you at all times, like in your pocket, or just somewhere where you have access to it? I have students that ask me for band aids all the time, and I never have band aids in my classroom. And I'm always like, I should probably have band aids in my classroom. I feel and like I always yeah, offer ba- them. I always offer them a, 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 like a tissue with scotch tape. And I'm like, yeah. Same? And they're like, No, nah, I don't want it. And I'm like, So okay, so you don't really want a band aid then. <laughs> I don't want. That's like some like World War One solving like a like a bleeding cut in like a classroom. That's like, I band aids is a is a necessity to have in a draw. I feel like for any teacher out there. Although yeah, it's true, that's why they have the nurses' office, so you can kind of get away with being like, no, I don't have band aids. Why would I have band aids? But then the but then the thing is. The nurse's office compared to where my classroom is, is like on the other side of the world. So but that's not like, on you. That's on the student for like doing something where they cut themselves in class. Well, yeah, but it's usually like because they're biting their nails and they like bite too deep on their cuticle. And they're like, do you have a band-aid? I'm like, no. If I can yeah. give you scotch tape and, and a tissue if it's that bad. And they're like, well, I'll just go to the nurse. I'm like, and then come back in 10 minutes? I'm like, see. Oh. The first time someone asked for that, I would have made it a mission to then go buy the most obscure Band-Aids so that that kid now in high school – because to a high school kid, putting something on your hand is kind of like, do I, do I want to put Baby Shark on my hand and have the whole class clown me or like Hello Kitty? So then I would have got like all the funkiest Band-Aids and had them in your draw. So like – It's a great idea. If you want to ask, you're going to be sitting there with you know like – yeah, some weariness on your hand. You know what? You know what that reminds me of? Remember when uh, dad used to teach in the Bronx? Yeah. And then he had, I don't know if you remember visiting his classroom? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. had, a, he had a, a pass, a bathroom pass. It yeah. was just a big ass toilet. Yeah. Like it was a toilet that you had to carry that had the key attached to it. Yeah. So if you went to the bathroom, you had to like carry this like crazy toilet. Yeah. And that was the pass. Yeah. I, um, I, I kind of. Like I, I like the mindset behind that that the place won't lose their key. The worst is when you ask like a gas station to use their bathroom and they're like, Yeah, it's outside and they give you something that's like crazy to hold because it's like so it, disgusting. It's like they give some, you like, like they give you like the key attached to like a crowbar. Yeah, or like just a like a hammer or something weird. <laughs> um, but I'll I'll usually end up forgetting that shit too in the bathroom. Like you know, like you, I'll have it on the toilet or somewhere that like you just forget to put it, and then you have to remember like, oh, I got to get the crowbar. So yeah, putting the key on the thing is a little. It's it, I'm I'm okay with that. Sometimes like the the thing they put it on is a little too much, and then you are holding too many. Like you don't want to yeah. do that when you're going to the bathroom. Like you get the point. You don't want to lose the key, but. You, you like attach it to like a 
fucking briefcase. It's like, come just on. Just put it on like a like a I don't know like a credit card size thing, and we're not gonna forget your key. And if, but it is kind of a big deal to the place. Like if that gas station that shit gets left in there, he's got to do the same thing as if anybody gets locked out of their house. They gotta like go or to the locksmith. Spare key. He probably has a spare key. Yeah, that's true. Why wouldn't he have a spare key? <laughs> He only has that one key. Well, I mean, like, some people only have two keys. To the, like, if you get locked out of your house, it's a wrap. Like, I got my keys locked in the car one time, and it was a whole thing. It's not fun getting yeah, locked so, out of that, a house. Or that's, why you gotta get that, that, that's, why, that's why you got the number oh, well, pad. Well, the keypad, yeah, but when I got my keys locked in my car, it was a rental car, and it was, like, the coldest night ever. And it oh, was that's, just, yeah, like, that's terrible. Insanely miserable. But shout out to, like... If you ever have used like AAA or like we once got a flat, I don't know, like a flat tire driving up to Binghamton and you have to call like AAA and it's like sometimes on a Sunday or a Monday and like, I don't know how their network works, but they're like connected to every gas station ever. Like it's not even just major shits because you can drive through like a town with no people and they're like, you call this like epicenter and they're like. They Rick and do Bob's the... like right tire shop is in the middle of Nowheresville, Kentucky. That might have been the name of the of the place that changed the tires when we were driving up to Binghamton. But it's impressive because then like like I got connected with this guy in Ohio who was like, "Yeah, I was just sitting on my couch watching TV and it's it's a bad snowstorm out here, but I, you know, I took the call." <laughs> well, they 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 all definitely register with AAA because they know that's potential business for them. So if they all register with them, then that's the incentive to get more work. And then AAA has this like database of like any single person that knows how to fix some shit. They really have every person under the sun because the guy that yeah. I had, like, I was like, "Are you a sports fan?" He was like, "Yeah, I used to throw the baseball with my grandma, but she's not here anymore." And I was like, <laughs> "You don't, you don't watch any like LeBron James? Nobody?" He was like, "Don't really know it." And I was like. But you know to get connected with AAA to fix cars and shit. Like, it kind of was impressive that there was still – those are the most interesting people is the ones that you can call a AAA on, like, a, a holiday or a Sunday. I don't know. It made me think of that guy because he, like, was so disconnected to the world. But at – it was, like, 12 o'clock at night on a Sunday, came out and got my keys out of my car. And he did this thing. Shout out to him. He like I put the I, wire I, in wire in through the window. Yeah, but then, what he yeah. had to do was like put pressure on the front door to like make the door pop out a little bit so he can squeeze his little thing in there and then like jimmy the keys and get it out. But it was like amazing and he was so talented at it that I was like, "Have you ever broken a window or done anything?" And he was like, "I've done this so many times that like I'm so good at it." Like it yeah. was yeah. I'm, 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 I just, I'm fascinated at that. And I don't think, I don't know, are you that good at anything where if somebody needed help in something, you could be like, well, Spanish, you could. Yeah, I could do that. I could trans, I've translated for so many people in so many situations where people are like, oh no, I'm stuck. And I'm like, how do yeah. I help you? That's They're an like, awesome trait. Like, I don't know. That's gotta be just a cool feeling to be able to, I don't know, like. Save, save a situation with a talent. Well, I try to, I, well, that's another thing is I try to tell all my students, I'm like, I know that you're in school and you're just thinking to yourself, like, this is just a subject and I have to just do this, like, it's math, whatever. Like, but you could really use this. Like, you could actually legit go out today and be in, like, a place and some person's, like, trying to speak Spanish and they don't know and you could potentially help them or you could just make a connection with someone. Yeah. Like, like, this is so useful for your life, you know? Well, even like, like any language, I mean, like if you go, not not even any language, but any certain trait that you can like get a level up with whoever's like, if you're at a restaurant, like they might make your food a little better because you speak Spanish with the guy. <laughs> Whereas like, I, I, well, don't. I don't know if they'll make the food better, but they'll definitely, you'll definitely connect with them better. Like you might get better service. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I want to ask you your thoughts on this because, uh, well, I want to get your thoughts first on the whole Chris Rock thing because I'm curious your your take on it. Um, just because the whole world is commenting on it, so everyone's got an opinion. I got my car 
um, looked at today because the brakes were a little suspect. And when they gave it back to me, this was like the first no-no. My seat was like all the way back and all the way adjusted wrong. Are you in the camp of if somebody moves your car seat, do you are you like, come on? I hate that. I hate that, but at the same like anytime Tiff moves a car and then she just leaves it all the way up and I can't get in. Yeah, the getting in is a is a bad one because you'll bang your oh knee or something. Oh my god, it's just so annoying. But I'm like, yeah, can't you just do that? But then at the same time I think about when I get out of the car, the I never think to change the seat. Yeah. So it's almost like <laughs> These people are working on cars nonstop. It's not their responsibility. I feel the it, opposite. I feel like it's a they... minor it's a minor inconvenience to just have to change your seat back. And then some some cars now like they have a setting. Yeah. And then it just automatically goes to your setting. Yeah. The settings is a clutch your one. Car, because your you car could... should have a setting. Uh, I don't think it has the setting on the seat. But I kinda disagree with you where if you're giving your car to the actual car like dealership thing. They should know the number one rule of like, don't fuck with someone's seat. Like, I it, maybe if the guy I'm giving it to is like seven feet tall and he's got to move it, like, at least make it known like, hey, I just I just moved the seat back a little bit or I moved it front a little bit. You can't adjust the whole shit so it's back. It's like giving your shoes to Foot Locker and them coming back to you creased up. Like, there's a unwritten rule with moving the car seat. That the car dealership place, the service place at a car dealership should know the rules. A car wash, they can kind of get away with it because they got to get in there and move it and like vacuum and all this shit. But a service department place, they kind of got to work with you and not touch your seat at all. Um, Just too much invested in time that goes into like sitting in the perfect position while you drive and safety reasons because – I don't want to have to be driving, adjusting my seat to make sure that I'm in a comfortable position to drive. Because it used to be when we were younger, if I don't know if this was just a New York thing, but like it kind of was like a cool factor where you would look at someone and at like oh, the further be, they oh, would be oh, back, man. the further back they were was almost like I forgot about the that. cooler the person thought they were. Whereas, like, I it's sit like mad close. They'd be laying down. Laying down, legit. Our stepbrother, Brian, like, I don't even know how he'd see over the steering wheel or look out the dashboard. It looked, it, looked, it looked like nobody was driving the car because. <laughs> You're that far back. Like, you would look in the window and there was no, like, head there. Yeah. And, like, you, like, it was a thing to sort of, like, clown people a little bit if they were sitting too close to the wheel. Like, it would be on some, like, two hands on the wheel. Granny. Yeah. Granny driving. And that's, like, I don't sit like you know this but i'm close to the wheel yeah but i don't know if that's still a thing where people like are like super far back but that i I, I don't know again i don't know if that was just like a new york thing where people were like really far back with their hand like on the wheel but that must have been like they couldn't have enjoyed driving like that no way and there's no way it was safe because you have no control over like the your anything yeah, no, that's a terrible way to drive. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't understand. It's, until you said that, I totally forgot that that was a thing. But I mean, yeah, like imagine was... taking your road test like that. <laughs> like what the like what the They're driving like, instructor would say. Like, he would instantly look at you and just be like, "Scatter the car." I was like in heavyweights. Yeah. When he was like, uh, Step "Josh Goldberg, get on the scale. Step off the scale." Shout out to myself. I passed the road test first try. Nothing. I think I actually dinged the bumper of the guy in the parallel parking, but the guy might have like let me go with it. Still gave me no marks like on my driving test. I feel like it's so subjective. Like the person that that's in the car with you, yeah, has so much power. Yeah. In terms of like, they could be so strict and fail you for anything. Yeah. And they could be super lenient and just be like, "He's a good kid. Here you go. You passed." Yeah. There's just so much stuff you do on your road test that like you don't actually do when you're driving. Like you gotta like. Like really put on the blinker and look out and like over, like act of what you're supposed to be doing on the road, yeah, just to like put on a show. The like I failed my first time, but the reason that I failed is because a lot of the things that I was doing. Mm -hmm. Remember, back then, as soon as you turned 16 and you got your permit, you could schedule your road test for like the next day. Oh yeah. So like I definitely didn't have enough practice, but um, 
the stuff that you do kind of informally, like, you know, when it's, you're in an intersection and it's a green light, but you have the other cars coming straight, have the yeah. right of way. Yeah. You want to like turn left. You got to go to like the middle of the intersection, right? Well, no, you're supposed to stay behind the line. And oh, the- I thought you were supposed to go to the middle of the intersection on that one. No, because what happens if the light turns red? Then you're in the middle of the intersection. You're blocking the box. That's when you're supposed to go. <laughs> That's when you get the pass. What I'm saying is I did that. Oh. Like, I definitely should not have done that. But I, like, pulled out mad far into the intersection. <laughs> I was just, like, chilling there. And I saw the guy look at me, and I was like. The light was, like, mad red. Well, it was, like, yellow. Then I was, like, inching up. <laughs> like, basically, like. And like getting into the oncoming traffic so I could make the turn. And that was the reason you think that you failed the first one? That was one of the reasons. He gave me like a receipt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had like a bunch of like errors on it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't even know. It'd be fun to be like a stand in for a road test driver now just to see what it was like. But to your point, I think you have to wait at least like six months or something like that like the rules yeah. changed a lot and you have to like drive with someone over 18 and the, like it's so stupid because it's like you can get someone just because someone's over 18 doesn't mean they're like mature enough to like be no, uh, I, think, like, I think the reason is because if you have more time to practice then you feel more comfortable on the road yeah that's probably true but you could still be a terrible driver I mean like I don't yeah. know. It's just so weird. I th- I mean, I, I still think people who are like 85 and above should re- have to retake their driving test because there's you know some why? people that, out that, there that... That's, that, that... None of that stuff will ever work. What? Having someone retake a driving test? So if you start discriminating against age, right? Now, granted... Well, I, I mean, you that? could make yes. like scientific arguments that like someone's eyesights are worse when they get older. Yeah. Grandma Mimi was driving like into her 90s. Yeah, yeah. And, and every time I get in the car, I would be so scared because she would go in like four miles an hour yeah. and like stop every time that she thought like it was a car. Yeah, I drive behind those people all the time. But you know why that'll never work is because who votes? Old people. Yup. And if you were like, all old people got to retake their driver's test, good luck trying to get voted into <laughs> office. They'd be like, that's a violation of my rights. Like, I, I'm perfectly fine. They make you take your eye test every once in a while, but but that's it. I feel like that's something that could be like an executive order. Like all it takes is like it'll happen eventually if we have a young enough president that like – well, no, actually because the president doesn't even – do you even well, think, think like the president knows how to drive anymore? At some point, he's got to like stop driving, right? Like if he was the vice yeah. – like Joe Biden – it's probably safe to say that all presidents are bad drivers. Um, Someone's I mean, going to hit us with they, like a – like Gerald Ford actually was an F1 driver or something <laughs> like – like someone's going to hit us with some shit. But like they they don't have – they don't drive anywhere. And if they do, it's probably on some like – I'm trying a, to think like what, what are some things that like you stop doing that – like do you lose it? Like when was the last time you rode a bike? Like, I don't know, probably 10 years. Well, no, actually, no, I probably did one of those city bikes or something. Like, bikes are back hot again. Okay, but what I'm, what I'm saying is it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. So, but if you got, like, that's the expression. Like, it's like riding a bike. I'm sure if they got behind the wheel, they'd be like, oh, I remember how to do this. Yeah, I guess yeah, so. Right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, they probably can drive. But they're probably... I think there's, there's muscle memory there. Like, I feel like... You've been driving your entire life. They've been driving for their like since their like whole adult life. Then they get into politics. They get like really high in politics, and they probably don't have to drive anymore. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I would, I, but I would still say that they're probably worse drivers than the average person. Do you think you'd be a worse bicycle rider than the average person? I mean, I don't know what you consider a bad bicycle driver because there's people who deliver food on bicycles that, to me... They're incredible. No, they actually are. That Like, that should be an Olympic sport. It's like, take delivery driver. Like, New York City Bike Delivery League. Or at least, or at least like, a video game. They have, like, subway surfers. Well, yeah. yeah I mean, they had, like, Crazy Taxi, which was a dope-ass video game. 
Uh, and you would have to just drive around the city and like get people to where they were as fast as you o- could. The OG game that's like that, that's the best game ever, is Paperboy for Nintendo. Paperboy is a good one, yeah. Remember that? When you were on the bike and you were like going straight and you had to like throw. You, how, what, did you have to just get it to the person? How did you lose? If you got hit by a truck or something? Yeah, or like you'd crash into something. Right. I do remember that game. That was on Game Boy, right? I think they had it for Game Boy, but I, I think I also remember playing on Nintendo. Or maybe it was for Game Boy. But it was, it was old. I think it was a Game Boy one. It might, might have been, yeah. I think they had both, but you had to throw the paper, and if it landed in like directly in the mailbox, you got like an extra point. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I saw a video once of a guy like uh, was a paper driver and he would throw it out of his window and he was so nice with it and he was like landing it right at people's doorsteps on like every toss. But that shit that like those are OG jobs like a paper boy is not a thing anymore like a kid like just getting on his bike and driving around the neighborhood. I mean I know people, people still get a paper but it's like. But it gets dropped off probably by someone and yeah but just still impressive that someone wakes up at five in the morning drives the neighborhood and drops a newspaper off like at your house because yeah that's kind of like a thing that probably should go away (laughs) i mean like people i don't know it's just like who has the time now to then at 5 30 in the morning walk out there like i remember our dad wearing like a bathrobe i don't picture people walking outside their house having time at six in the morning to pick that shit up, read it, drink coffee, and then, you know, go to work. But nobody's going to work anymore. So maybe it's a thing. But the other thing that like is sad is that because nobody like reads print anymore, everything is online, but because yeah. everything is online, everyone's fighting for clicks. Yep. Because everyone's fighting for clicks, everything is clickbait. So even your local newspapers, they used to just have some like, just like run of the mill, not run of the mill, like just, like non sensationalized, like local news, whatever. Yeah. Like they didn't have to fight for. Well, like, you knew where like the junk articles were. Like there was always like I mean I think there still is that like page six where like if you know you're turning to page six, you're gonna get some trash ass like Kim Kardashian article or something bogus. But even that, that was the post. I'm talking yeah. about like the local news here, like oh like Journal, journal News or Low Low Hud or whatever. Like you know they they have local writers but at the same time i feel like their revenue isn't coming from old school old school subscriptions so you're saying it's everyone's all- writing garbage now if, if they're not writing garbage they, they have to get people to click on their actual things yeah and in order to do that they have to <clears throat> have some like sensationalized like like yeah will like title smith. or yeah, yeah yeah something yeah blah, blah. it's like nothing to do with will smith it just has to do with the fact that like i got your attention like, this the local football te- like the local football team smacked the opponents. <laughs> but they just like, title it like Will Smith. Yeah, like, like Chris Rock or something like that. Yeah, like lo- like Will Smith smacked, turned local. Yeah. Oh, what's this about? Oh. Something that they don't give a shit about. Yeah, no, that's true. All right, so let me get your take on this because uh, we spoke about this on Kyle and Corin. Um Everyone, like, and their mother is on Twitter writing about it. I'm just curious your thoughts. I've shared my thoughts. I'll share them again. Um, At the end of the day, I'll say all this. I really don't give a shit about either one of them. Like, they they are doing fine. They're going to be okay. But, like, you got to have a reaction on it just because everybody did. Like, the the kid who picked me up to get my car today was, like, this little – high school kid or something uh, who drives for like the Chevy company and we were just driving. I was like, should Will have smacked him? And he had an opinion on it. Like every, it, that's the new, like what's the weather outside is like your opinion on the smack. So just curious your thoughts. So originally I didn't even want to watch it. Cause I was like, I'm not even going to give them that attention because I just assumed it was fake. Because nobody's watching award shows anymore. Like yeah. it's just not a thing. Like people don't care. I didn't even like, know it was these, on. Really, there's all these Hollywood elites, and they just like all congratulating each other. And it's like this is so far removed from my life. Yep. And anything that has anything to do with my life, that I don't give a shit. Yep. If like some really rich actor gets an award that's given to him by his peers, 
like thank like the movie, academy the whole movie that i never watched and never will watch yeah so like i was like i'm not even watching this and then it got to be such a big thing that i was like all right let me just watch it and let me and just I say watched. this before you continue is like this is one of the situations where you're not really on social media you mm-hmm. are on twitter a little bit but but there's so much garbage that happens on social media that like you don't need to hear about which is probably good for you but this is one of those situations that you probably had to have just like you couldn't miss it, you know? So it's like people say, yeah. like, I'm off social media. I'll hear about the important stuff if it happens. This was one of the things that I'm sure people that without even social media had to have heard about. Definitely. It's like right in the mainstream of everything. Yes. So at first I was like, this is fake. This is the Oscars way of trying to get eyes on on the show. It went viral. Everyone's talking about it. But then I started, like, looking at it more, and I was like, you know what? It probably wasn't fake, but... Will Smith is just like, and all these guys, all these freaking people in Hollywood, they're living in this bubble where they think they're the most important people in the world. Yeah. And there's no consequences for anything. They don't, they don't think about stuff like you and I do. Yeah. And no one's ever probably checked him before. Yeah. Like no one's ever been like, yo, you're wrong. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Cause you've got all yes, man. Like, Like, even like when I'm with my boys, like if I'm wrong on some shit, like someone will check me. They'll be like, you're wrong. Yep. I, I might be like, oh, yeah, you know what? You might be right. Or I might just be like, fuck you. And then, like, we, there's an argument. Yeah. But, like, who's in his life doing that? Yeah. No, you're right. There's not many people in these people's camps who are have the balls to say, uh, like, no, don't take that movie. Or, like, it, like it's, it's, it's just, a bad they're, look they're, for you. So I think at that point, he just, was just, like, on some – Oh, my wife didn't like that. I'm just going to go up there and smack him. Like, what rational human does that? Yeah. I, so, so... It, it, it was... The more I, like, think about it, the more wrong I think he is. And then there's, like, the fact that it's even, like, a question and there's people that are like, no, nah, what he did is fine. And, like, oh, he's protecting his woman. And I made this point on Kyle and Corn. The Not whole, protecting his woman. But, but the whole ahead. concept of protecting your woman is, like... Who are you to, like, where is the, like, why do you even need that in a relationship? Like, why can't a woman stand up for herself? Like, who are you, like, to try and justify your, like, role as a man to be like, I now I have to go up on stage and smack this guy because he said something about my woman, my wife. And people are, like, applauding that. Like, she's totally capable of saying yeah. will like let's talk about this after let's meet up with chris rock or maybe i'll go on stage and smack him like why who are you to make that decision for her and that's what kind of like irked me is like we live in this world now where like everyone wants to be all like we're all equal and like you know like women's rights and all this shit but like and now people want to side with will because he stood up for his wife it's like it's just like it's so it's the whole situation is just like kind of it's just like annoying to me. Yeah, I agree. I I feel like um I get it. Like chivalry is in like there's still a place in society for chivalry, but like this is some shit where insecurities and just understanding that you could be bigger than that, right? Like comedians make jokes. Chris Rock is paid to be there. Yeah. That's his job. Like he's there to make jokes. It wasn't even a bad joke. But on top of that, it's kind of like, all right, he said some shit. I don't agree with it. I don't like it. But, like, you don't smack somebody. Just be a bigger man. Just be like, you know? Yeah. Like, if your wife has that much of a problem with it, you could be like, I get it. I'll have a talk with him. Yeah. If or like, you don't feel oh, comfortable yeah. doing that. You know what I mean? But it's yeah. just. No, the whole, the, I mean, I will say, like someone said, like, it was like the perfect smack though it kind of was weird how like just perfect it landed and like how yeah it was on some like one of those like russian smack contest smacks yeah like it looked like he had been practicing that or had done that before it it just like like, it's like like wwf smack like he kind of like turned his whole body with it and like positioned his other hand to be like stationary it was weird because i like i was like if i'm gonna smack somebody i don't even know like how i would do it like my other hand would probably like be hanging and I would like just. Like, yeah, I would just. I would just probably just like. Yeah, just yeah. You can do like a like a, just a a stern smack. I, the whole thing is like, 
the whole Oscars and just the whole like like statements from people is like it's just a joke. And the fact that they, I mean, there have been funny tweets that come out of it, so that's kind of a good thing. Um, but yeah, I have no sympathy for Will Smith and 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 even Jada. Like I, I feel bad that she has alopecia. That sucks. But like the. Chris Rock but like is still yeah, but she, fine. She's doing all right. She's she's doing all right. She's doing all right. Um, so yeah. So I don't know. Those that that would those are really my thoughts on the situation. And like, I read an article like Kareem Abdul Jabbar put out. Um, and like he kind of said the same thing. Like, who who is Will Smith to really like speak for Jada? In like, I don't know if we're trying to like get rid of all these like barriers and norms. But to your point, there still is something for like. I think back to a Bronx tale where he um, holds the door for the girl or something like that. And there's no, certain... that was the Mario test. You're talking about when, yeah, but that was in a Bronx tale, but it wasn't, that wasn't about chivalry. That was, you, you know, you have one the, of the, the one door of the locked or good, something like that. Yeah. One of the, you only get three good women in your life. And, Oh, that wasn't the Mario test. Mario test was like some vulgar shit that. Yeah, Mario Sun- test wasn't Sun- the door thing. No, Sonny was the door like, test. Mario. Mario's an idiot. Forget about him. The door test was the one that Sonny told Collodrill to do. He said, lock both doors and then get out and go around the car. Like, let her in her car. Yeah. Let her your, her side. Lock your side and go around to your side. If she doesn't think enough to go to your side, and unlock your door for you when you go in, then she's worthless. Was that it? She had to walk around and open no, no. your he door? No, no. around. He opened the door for her on the passenger side. Yeah. Right? But he locked his own side door. Oh, no. She had to reach over and unlock it or something, right? Right. That's what I'm saying because it was locked. Yeah. He locked the driver's side door, right? Yeah. And then went around and let her in the passenger side. Yeah, yeah, And he walked back around the car. To his to the driver's side, and it if she sounds like open, a lot of walking. It is. <laughs> it was. It was more walking than you normally do. Um, but that that is another point I want to make too. Is like people are so just one side or the other on things. Like I guess some people are okay with hitting, which I guess I was brought up, and we were brought up like never really put your hands on people. Like it's like a confrontation can be solved through words, and that's kind of right. how I see things um don't get it twisted i think our dad would say like hey like you know make no, sure if you ever got into a fight to get said, the like, first the first hit yeah, he's always said that um but i've never if it's, but, but only if fight. it's like but only if it's like gets to that point exactly yeah like but then but so there's people on the side that's like the confrontation the hitting was fine other people like he could have used his words i'm curious your thoughts on like the dynamic of like, does a man still have to pay for a woman uh, or like the the man figure in a relationship have to pay for, or female I mean, figure in a relationship have to pay for the bill. And I, mean, like, I feel like if it's the first date, like a guy should pick it up. Like, you know, and if, and if a girl feels strongly about not letting the guy do it, then the guy should just say, Oh, okay. If you want to split it. But where does and that norm like, like start from? Like where, why, 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 this is the well, guy on the first day have to pick tra- up the bill. In the tradition that the man is typically the breadwinner, so if he goes out with a girl, he's the one with the money, and the girl isn't, which is obviously not true anymore. Yeah, and which to me is like, so why do we still, you know, like I guess live in that world where people feel like it's even still a thing to be like, oh, the guy didn't pick up the bill, then fuck him, move on, like. Yeah, but I mean, like, the other thing is I feel like it's symbolic still, right? Because it's not like the amount of money that you're paying for that dinner is going to, like, bankrupt you. So it's kind of a sign of, like, I appreciate the fact that you went out with me and I can take care of the bill just as, like, a a general sign of appreciation and, you know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. That's what, that's I guess it's it. just, like, a slippery slope because then it leads to, like, I, I still – get mad at the will situation because it's like who who is he and maybe like because men are just physically like a cut like um like typically stronger than like women is that you know like 
just like on their body type that that they have to be like a protector t- kind of. So like I don't know, just yeah. I mean, there's a key and peel skit like this. Did you ever see this one? No, or maybe um, I did. I've seen a lot of them. I was just talking about the uh, uh, the black ice one with Molly's brother, and it was just like they were reporting when it was like because uh, he fell on black ice, and the reporter was like. Oh, it was just like a white reporter at the desk, and he's like, "Oh, be careful out there! There's a lot of black ice." And the the guy's like, "Okay, okay, all right, okay. You, it's just some ice, though. You don't have to." He's like, "Yeah, but it's black ice. Be careful!" And like he kept saying all that. Um, I don't know. It was just, it, I I think the same line of that one was they had a Power Ranger skit with like the Black Ranger. And he was, like, getting pretty, like, <laughs> mad. And they're like, okay, okay, easy there, Black Ranger. He was like, well, I- I'm just a ranger also. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they, wasn't the Black Ranger black, though, for real? Yeah, Zach. Oh, no, no, no. Zach was the red and green and white, I think, Ranger. <laughs> Zach was like, they made him all the G colors. Uh, I forgot what oh, he, the Black he was, like the, was. Like, like the dude with, like, the ponytail, right? No, it wasn't a ponytail. That was the bad guy, I think. No, Zach, Zach had, like, slick back hair, I think. Oh, I feel like he had, like, a pulled back. No, you know what? Yeah. His name was Tommy. I'm bugging. Tommy, I think, was the Green Ranger. Okay, but... Zach was... We're confusing Saved by the Bell, I think. I don't... Zach... I don't know if Zach was a Power Ranger, too. Oh. All I know is that, like... Is now that, that I'm looking Ranger? back on it, like, did they have to make the Black Power Ranger black? Yeah, I don't know. Why, why couldn't he have been, like... The green Power Ranger. Well, they made the yellow Ranger was Asian, and the pink Ranger no. was just like some like white, like a, like, like a Valley Girl. Yeah, and then like blue, which I don't even know if this is associated, but blue was Billy was like the nerdy dude. Yeah, I don't know how you. The other one's a little suspect, but what, yellow, like yellow black. Yeah, yeah, That's... no, I know definitely. But back then there was like the writers were definitely like oh so. Well, Okay. It's the Black Ranger. So what happened to Black Ranger? Oh, the the Black Rangers. Jones played the character of Zach Taylor, the original Black Power Ranger. So his was name was Zach. Oh, Zach. That's crazy that that we kind of got that right. You got that right. Oh, okay. Maybe that's why. He kind of looks like Wayne Brady a little bit. I know. I, I have his face in my. I got. Yeah, he was a G. I remember him. Yeah, he used to like mess people up. Um, you remember, remember the show that you, you used to watch? This it was like the bootleg Power Rangers. It was called like it was called VR Troopers. No, I didn't watch VR Troopers. Don't try and play me on that shit. Power Rangers <laughs> was my shit, and then like I, I stopped watching Power Rangers. I did not ever get into like VR I Rangers. It, it used to be on TV. Yeah, they used to be like they used to go into the computers and they used to fight the computer viruses. You're making this shit up. That's not Swear a... Swear to God. That, Look like, it up. <laughs> VR I would Rangers. never watch VR Rangers. And I remember the theme song. It was like, we are VR. VR Rangers? Yeah, or VR Troopers. VR Troopers? Yeah, but VR Troopers. Yeah, here's it for everybody. That was it. See, that to me looks like a knockoff of what the... um like thing used to look like that the Mortal Kombat's used to like gear into and it was like this like little dinosaur looking thing that they would all like transform into to beat whoever the person they were trying to beat was but I don't remember VR Rangers I I, I remember there was um a show on Channel 11 with uh I don't know it was like vampires or some shit i don't even remember the name of it but power rangers was my shit and then i spoke to kyle we were talking about old school wwf he liked kind of the um i forgot what era he called oh yeah it. razor ramon just died yeah razor ramon died and it made me like scott you know, hall think yeah it made me think back to like mr perfect and lex luger and like bam bam bigelow and yokozuna but that do you remember classic. watching like the old school WrestleManias at like the Caesars Palace, like when they would like turn it into yeah, like, that was it the outdoor, like that was the outdoor WrestleMania. Those were like the the years of wrestling that were like the shit. Tom, 
It was like Tatanka and Shawn Michaels. Yeah, like those were the the like, um, Million Dollar Man. Like there was like, you like that like watching those videos, and I would I would have to like go on YouTube and watch it, but it would bring back so many memories. Yes. I forgot what he called. Oh, he called it the Attitude Error or something like that. Was the one that he was into, but it was a lot of like Degeneration X. Like, yeah, I wasn't into any of that. Um. I was out of it. But yeah, the but you talk about like Power Rangers really playing into stereotypes of like like a Yellow Ranger and the WWF used to straight be super like racist whole, with like That was their whole thing. That was their whole thing. And they turned Razor Ramon, I think he was like Puerto Rican. No, he's just a white dude. He is, but I think Razor Hold Ramon on. was like a was Puerto Cuban. Rican dude or yeah, Cuban. Was he Cuban was or Cuban. Puerto Rican? He was Cuban because he was in Miami. That was his thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I love... You see Jerry Curl with the toothpick and, like, the gold chains. They were, like... He was the man. And then Mr. Perfect used to just have, like, his little thing on and then just have, like, the towel over his neck. And he used to come out and, like, his hair would be all wet also. With the, with he would have, mullet. like, this smug look on his face, like, fuck all you guys. Have, like, girls around him. Yeah, that was like, as a kid, there was nothing better than watching those like WrestleManias, and it was all on pay per view, which we had the illegal cable box, so we were able to watch all that shit. Yeah. Bret Hart, Bret Bret Hart was like my idol growing up, and like me too. Yeah. He turned rocking pink tights and what looked like some Air Jordans, and just made everybody wanted to wear those pink shades. Yeah, those sunglasses. Yeah, which are which are back now. And he, and he always gave one kid his sunglasses when he walked in. Yeah. And I always wanted to be that kid. I feel like we went to a – we went yeah, – we, we have a picture him. at the county center. He, he went against Yokozuna. At the county center? Do you remember that? Because you're a little older than I am. But, like, I don't I do remember, remember that. it too much. I remember it and I was like – But is it a real memory? Yeah, 100%. Uh-huh. And it was just like like you were in heaven because like I don't remember it. I don't even know if I was there. I just remember there's like one picture somewhere in our house of like that event that yeah, maybe like no, someone it. just donated that picture to us and we thought that we were there. No, we went because it was used to be at the county center. It was right there in White Plains. I know. But I don't remember it. But I remember having all the bread hardship because he was he was the goat. And then Owen Hart came out passed away unfortunately but he was never well he was actually an og with it because he used to wear pink too and then he switched and became like his own person and remember i met him though stuff. i met him i met him in stanford well yeah that i remember we were at a chess tournament and they were all there i don't know if they were the, there visiting the offices or something like that right the headquarters are right there in stanford yeah and, and then they were all they were like some of them were chilling in the, like the hotel like the hotel jacuzzi, and we no, might have been in the never, jacuzzi I, with one I of them. The hot tub, yeah. And then Owen Hart came into the jacuzzi. It was like a big thing, not like yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he was like on top of me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, banged Owen Hart. I remember looking across and I was like, "What the fuck? That's Owen Hart." Yeah. So and then he fucking died. Yeah, that one was wild. I remember actually watching that live and not – like it was on some Oscar shit where like they – I don't know if they cut away. I don't remember what they did, but there was no like delay. I think they just didn't put the camera on the stage or something like that and left it up in the rafters. So you were like, what the hell is happening here? And then they cleared him off or got him on a stretcher and then just continued on with the rest of like the WWF. But – I I kind of enjoy seeing – so your boy, Matt, um, he's like not weirdly into but like is really passionate about like local like wrestling matches that like go, will go to like a mall or like just a random venue and people will go and watch. And I got a boy, Steve, who just recently did that too with ECW, went and watched locally and they're still like – jumping on tables and there's like a yeah. referee like someone had to apply to be a referee for like a local wrestling outing which is kind of respect like i kind of respect that and i also wanted to say i respect like i respect the people who seek that out and will go there and actually enjoy it and and 
just have an awesome time that don't need to pay 90 bucks to go WWF WrestleMania type of shit. So I just saw Matt this weekend because it was his son's first birthday. Mm-hmm. And he had one of his boys from high school there, and they both know so much about wrestling. And they were talking about wrestling. And, I mean, like, my wrestling knowledge ends when I stopped watching, which was when I was, like, 13 or 12. Something. Yeah. Yeah. And they were talking about wrestling. Like, they were encyclopedias. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, people are passionate about it. And to a point where they'll seek out the local shit, which you will actually see real wrestling, like dudes getting real bloody, not just like a cut that they'll turn into like a whole like face bleeding. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I got a lot of respect for people who like seek out that stuff and also like people who will find underground concerts or bands or music. Like our sister will find these, I don't know, like concerts or just little shows. And that's where you typically find you know, some of the best music or talent that's really, like, undiscovered. Um, I don't know. It's, I think it's just pretty cool. I got a lot of respect yeah. for people. And I feel like that's how and why I love, like, the fans of the show so much because they kind of, like, I'm, I'm kind of always interested or fascinated when someone finds our podcast. Like, that's Kyle and Corn or even this. Like, the people who comment on this, I'm like – damn, like, you took time to watch this, and, like, there's, you know, and I, I mean, all the mainstream shit sucks, but, like, there's Jimmy Kimmel out there who's, like, a version yeah. of, like, who's, like, a a version of me with a lot of money put behind it, so it's just a more, like, clean yeah, thing of what you're getting here. So, I don't know, shout out to people who, like, actually look for other shit that is entertaining. Cause I, yeah. I don't, cause I don't do it. But sometimes when I do stumble across something, I'm like, oh shit, like this and is. Like, I want to cool. talk about everything that I'm into. Also, like, um, Sofa King was like, I forgot he had like a suggestion. Fuck. And I think um, a suggestion oh, for was, what? Like, in the comments, he was like, talk about like your travels and stuff. But I feel like I don't know if I talk about like shit that used to happen in DR or whatever, like. How like they used to have the windshield wiper guy, like washer guys at every red light. Yeah, and they would throw the sponge from far. Yeah, so yeah they were it, nice with that shit. And if it hit your windshield, they'd have to like wash it. And one time, like, dude threw the sponge and it hit the driver in the face because he didn't have a windshield. Yeah, and I was like, damn, like, even if and those rags were that, dirty as shit too. It's not like they're cleaning and, your and car it, with some it, fresh ass shit. Face. And like, I was thinking to myself, even if he did have a windshield. That shit had to be so clean because he didn't even fucking have a windshield. Yeah. It's so, still trying to watch that shit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the stuff it's we like, saw out there is wild. I remember being in the left turning lane. Dudes would come from, like, the fifth lane on the right. Well, this is actually what happened. Like, did that. Turned on, like, red. Like, OD red. It wasn't even like that shit had just turned red. We waited in the actual lane turn, then got pulled over and hit up yeah, the but, money. To try and follow them and like it, the, like, it, the, like, not even a bad thing, but like being white in a different country is kind of like you got a target on your back. Yeah, I mean, it's just for different reasons, though, right? Like, I mean, yeah, money reasons. They think just yeah, they I mean, associate like white with money. Well, also, we we were in Santiago where there's not like like we look not Dominican. You know what I'm saying? So. Every time that, like, we get spotted by the cops. But other countries, too, like in China, like, uh, Molly's sister lived in China, and she says, like, white people out there or even, like, you know, like anyone who's not Chinese is, like, a superstar. Like, people are just fascinated to see someone who's not them. Yeah, but when you're in the national police and you're not making that much money and you see some guy that's driving through that looks like, this guy doesn't know DR, and you just, like, we'll just pull him over and we'll tell him that he has to go to the police station. He'll just give us money. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, I would be shook. I, 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 you know, if if I'm not with you or know the situation. Yo, that was like the time when I was near my old neighborhood in DR. I got pulled over by those cops, and I was pretending not to be able to speak Spanish. Yeah, and then and that dude and that dude who used to like protect the bar that I used to go to overnight. Yeah, like the watching man. Like he he like, he saw you and like pulled over. over. He went up to the cop and was like. 
oh, no, 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 ese, ese tipo está bien, no te preocupes, ese, and it, and I was like, oh, no, fuck, no, and I was like, pretending like I didn't know him, and the cop was just so, confused, because he's thinking you don't know English, the guy's telling him, this guy is Hispanic, and I was like, pretending like I didn't know him, he probably was like, damn, this guy's a dick, yeah, it's, um, We've had, yeah, we can get into more stories of that down the road if people yeah, we'll are do that, interested. We'll do that down the road. But, yeah, we've had some crazy encounters yeah. in DR that, um, that, yeah, guns held up to us, you know, uh, driving Thinking through toll we were, booths like, where we drove through a toll booth and we were in this car that I, my feet were like on the bottom and it was like hotter than like, the hottest thing I've ever put my feet on. And I was like, dude, I think your car is, I don't know what, like it feels like your car is on fire underneath my feet. And he's like, that's okay. It's like the stuff that happens out in DR. There's just like, there's no rules out there. There's no rule. Like, and, and you said it best is like, if you can get a functioning car to just go forward out there, you can drive yeah. it. There's no, well, it's funny. Cause like we think about like emission, emission standards in like every state, you know, yeah. like the past, your inspection shit out there. If you could like put some shit together, it could like fucking ruin the ozone layer. But they're like, yo, you, you did it. You well, made a car. out here, I mean, you kind of, I'm kind of fascinated sometimes when I'll, I was just driving in downtown Chicago last week and someone's whole bumper shit was fucked up. And I was like, damn, like, and they're still driving. But you take that to like DR, like every car or like every other car is like, the whole side will be missing and it's still going forward if the left side is good and people are sitting on it. Um, so yeah, I mean, shout out to like just people out there being resourceful and like able to like function way better than we are here. But again, yeah. everything out here is like, there's a money reason behind it. Like you have to do like if right, right, right. you have to get your car inspected and because, registered, and, registered yeah. and uh, insurance and all this shit, because there's big corporations that are just, like I don't, I don't enjoy the State Farm commercials. I don't enjoy any of like the like uh, any of these other major companies when uh, Mastercard or Jennifer Gardner's and all this shit for Capital One because they're just stealing people's money and giving it to Aaron Rodgers and Drake and the State Farm guy to make this dumb fucking commercial because I'm paying a shit ton of insurance money. That at the end of the day, if something happens, I'm not covered or, for. Or interest, high interest rates on credit card loans. Interest rate. So like, so everyone do me a favor. When you see the State Farm commercials with any new celebrity in it, that's your money paying for them to do that shit. Like, I hate when there's a new celebrity in those commercials because that's my money. And like, you could not be putting those commercials out and just charging me less money. It's just annoying because, uh, yeah. uh, like, and at the, uh, at the end of the day, you don't ever use the car insurance. And maybe maybe you do when you get into an accident. But, like, for the most part, you're paying them a shit ton of money and, and there's no return on it. And the other thing I was going to say, just because my computer's about to die and I got to get up early to work out, <laughs> is um, – then also people who comment and like you see that there's a connection between you and them, like um, Sonal Sharma. Oh, Sonal always goes ham. Shout out to Sonal. I don't know who she yeah. is. She said she I lives know. in Stanford, so that's what's up. But she cool. always. So, that's, so I saw that comment and I was like, oh shit, like that's awesome because we were talking about um, the Moy Povich show. Yeah. And just how like, and then so she probably heard Stanford and was like, oh shit, like they know Stanford. You know what I mean? So it's Stanford, just, it's Sono's just... got to be an undercover person we know or something like that because, like, she'll, she, I don't know pronouns now, but hopefully it's just, like, <laughs> she will always throw a positive comment. Like, I'll get on the air and be like, oh, I just got a haircut. And she'll always, she'll be like, the haircut looks great. You're fine. The glasses are good. Like. Yeah, it might be like, do you think it's mom? No, mom, <laughs> I think you commented to last week. She's night something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And you were like, yeah, road trips are great. I was like, I don't think he knows that that's mom. You're such a handsome young man. Yeah. It's Ooh, like, oh, oh thank yeah. you. Yeah. No, so, Sonos, like, for real, I you can guarantee, like, there's never going to be a negative word out of her mouth, hopefully. It's always some positive, like, shit that, like, I, I really appreciate. Oh, I think your shit died or something, but I can't hear you anymore. Oh, love oh, you. Oh, there you Thanks. are. There you are. 
All right, but my shit is going slow as hell. My computer's about to die. All right. Well, love you guys. Love you, bro. All right. Love we'll you see too. you guys next I'll week. T- All right. Later. Peace.